Hey everyone, a while back I did a review on the Extra PC USB stick and I recommended quite heavily not to spend your money on that. And though I did cover Linux Live USB sticks in that video, I didn't go over how to create a drive with persistence, like what you can do with the Extra PC. This basically means that you can plug in a USB stick, run your OS off of that stick, do some work, power down the PC, move that USB stick to another computer, and all of your settings and files will move instantly to that other PC as well. And all of that sounds great, right? Well, it's not all puppies and rainbows. And later on in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the potential reasons that you may not actually want to create a persistent portable OS. I want to point out before we go any further that even though I'm making a portable Linux USB stick, I will be making this drive on a, an actual Windows PC. I do a lot with Linux, but I am far from a Linux guru. The method does exist to do this on a Linux PC, but you'll have to seek that out on your own if you want to do it that way. So to get started, we're going to need a couple of things. A USB stick, of course, and I recommend an 8GB stick or bigger. I'll be using a 16 gigabyte drive in this video. You'll also need to download Rufus, which you can get at rufus.ie. Personally, I just use the portable version. There are other Linux drive creation tools like UUI and Bellina Etcher, but Etcher, as far as I know, is incapable of flashing a drive with persistence. And I've personally had the most luck with Rufus, so that's what we'll be focusing on in this video. Next, we'll need an ISO file. And as far as I know, the ISO that we'll need has to be either Ubuntu or an Ubuntu-based distro. You can try other flavors of Linux if you want, but I can't guarantee what will work or not. If you do try something else, whether it works or not, please leave a comment below to let us know. But for this tutorial, I'm going to go with Linux Mint. It's Ubuntu-based and is a great fully featured OS with just about everything you would need in an operating system. And I'm going to grab Mint LXDE. It's my favorite desktop environment. So here you can see the Linux Mint ISO that I downloaded, and I've got it placed on my desktop, and the Rufus shortcut right beside it. So we're ready to go. Once you have your USB drive inserted into the PC, open Rufus, select your USB stick from this drop-down menu, and be careful to select the USB stick that you do indeed want to overwrite. And keep in mind that this process is going to completely format that USB stick and you will lose any data that is currently on it. Next, select your ISO file. In this case, it would be the Linux Mint ISO that I placed on my desktop. Next, set your persistent partition size with this slider bar. I'm able to assign up to 12 gigabytes here, so that's what I'm going to do. Then select your partition scheme. I've chosen MBR. It's an older protocol, but I want to maximize compatibility. The point of this OS is for it to be portable. And as I don't know what kind of PCs I will encounter with this portable drive, I want to make it as universal as possible. If you know for certain that you will only use this drive on newer PCs, you can select GPT if you want. For target system, I've chosen BIOS or UEFI, again, to maximize compatibility. Now click Start to begin the formatting operation. I've gotten this pop-up telling me that there is an additional download required and it's asking me if I want to connect to the internet to download the additional files. Click yes to proceed. You'll get one final warning about how this is going to format your USB stick, destroying any data that is currently on that stick. So when you're ready, click yes to proceed and the flashing process will begin. At this point, we're basically done. You can use that stick as a portable OS now, but let's check it out on another computer. I've inserted this stick into my test machine here with a Manjaro installation. When I power on this PC, I'm tapping the F12 key to access the boot menu. This key can vary depending on the make and model of whatever PC you are trying to boot, so it's good to know what you're working with. Some common options are F12, Escape, Delete, and F2. Most PCs are actually set to boot from USB first by default, so you may not even need to access any boot menus, and you can actually skip this step, but it is something to keep in mind. Anyway, we see my boot menu now, and I'm going to select USB Storage Device. 
It almost immediately loads to the Linux Mint boot screen, and at this screen, just hit the Enter key to start Linux Mint. So if you've worked with Linux Live ISOs in the past, you'll see that this is nothing new. However, whenever you shut down the PC, any changes that you made during your session will not be saved. It's because those session settings are normally written to system RAM, and when you shut down the PC, that memory gets cleared. With this setup, remember we created that 12 gig of persistent storage earlier, so that's where the changes will be written to. But I'm going to put that to the test by making a few changes and seeing if they stick. So I'm going to connect to my home Wi-Fi. I'm going to open Firefox and establish a browsing history. I'll just go to YouTube and set that as my home page. I'll also change the default desktop background to something else, like this one. That'll be a bright indicator at a glance whether or not things have remained persistent after our reboot. And finally, I'm going to go into Software Manager and install a software package. I'll just go with Audacity for the purposes of this test. Alright, so we see here that Audacity has installed and launches just fine. So now I'm going to reboot and see if the changes we made are actually persistent. Okay, so immediately we see the desktop background change that I made, and that's a good indication of persistence. And we see that our browser opens up to the home page of YouTube. That's good. And Audacity launches with no problems. So as a final test, I'm going to shut down the system, remove the USB stick, and power the PC back on. At which point, we should see this test computer boot into Manjaro Linux, which is the operating system that I installed on its internal hard drive. And there it is. We're back up and running normally, and it's safe to assume that I can take this USB stick to another machine, and those persistent changes will move along with the USB stick. Okay, so we've looked at how to create a persistent USB OS for taking with you on the go. But before anyone uses that as a full solution for everyday use, let's go over some of the reasons as to why you may not want to do this. The first reason is security. As you saw, this is still running a live instance of Linux Mint. So you probably noticed that there was no password to log in with, and that's because it's not an actual installation per se. So if you use this drive in a place like a library or a university lab, and then leave and forget to take that drive with you, you've potentially handed over personal data to the next person to come along who gets their hands on that drive. It's not to say that there isn't a use for something like this, just exercise extreme caution with what you put on this drive. As always, I recommend using these live USB sticks for diagnostic and repair tools, but I personally don't use them as full-time operating systems. Which, another reason not to use them as a full-time OS is that it's installed on USB flash media, which has been heavily debated in the reliability department. Running a full-blown OS will put a lot of stress on that drive in the way of write cycles. And just like a normal hard drive, if you don't have a backup, once it's dead, your data is gone. Now some have argued that you can just install the OS on a full-blown external USB hard drive to overcome the write cycle limitation, to give it the reliability of an internal OS. And you can do that. But will you put an external hard drive on your key ring and carry it around in your pocket? Well, you can if you want, I guess. Another problem though is speed. It's been argued that USB 3.0 is comparable to SATA 3, but I don't have the exact data in front of me. However, if you're working with a computer with only USB 2.0 ports, you're going to see a tremendous drop in speed. So I think it's always better to replace an internal hard drive with a solid state hard drive with a dedicated OS installation than rely on a USB OS. But with all of these arguments aside, the number one rule here on Lodo Tech is you do you. It's never my place to dictate to you your tech needs. So some of you may be wondering exactly how to create a persistent Windows OS instead. I'm going to cover that in my next video, but I'm going to wrap this one up with a shout out to my patrons. If you'd like to support this channel on Patreon and now Ko-Fi, there will be links in the description below. Donations are appreciated, but never expected. Remember, the best way you can support this channel is to like, comment, share, and subscribe. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time with more money-saving tech tips.